Okay, folks, we're at uh, the next video. And now we're going to talk about you've just done the exercises. You think you've done outstanding. Oh, I didn't miss anything. I got everything perfect. I did great. Oh, and you may have. You know why DUIs are subjective? They're supposed to be objective, but they can't be objective. You know why? Because they're not in laboratory. Every officer doesn't have the same training. And like I told you about these results of these, oh, 88% accurate, 79% accurate, 83% accurate. Yeah, that's all great. In perfect conditions. What about when the wind's blowing and cars are going by and a motorcycle goes by and you're nervous that maybe your neighbors see you out in front like as they're turning down their road to go to their house, right? There's an embarrassment. Like there's factors that can affect wind, right? Eyes. You see, you see this exercise right here? So you can see the, you see the lights on top of the vehicle. You see that blue light? Guess what? That's another thing. Those strobe lights can affect you, right? They can cause you to mess up. It goes to the weight. Doesn't mean that they won't be admissible, but those lights are supposed to be off. Um, the, the, the defendant, the, the suspect in this video should not be facing the car. It should be facing away from the car or those overhead lights, the blue and red lights should be off. Anyway, so let me keep going. So now the officer is going to say, okay, I need you to walk towards my vehicle. He's going to have you walk towards your vehicle, towards his vehicle. He's going to say, okay, I need you to put your hands behind your back. And then he's going to handcuff. You. He's going to say, I believe you're, you know, I'm arresting you for DUI. And then you're going to either go, oh, geez, like, what am I going to do? Or you're going to go, I'm not drunk. Or, you, you know, um, the best case is, you know, is when my clients would go, officer, I haven't had a drink. Like, is there a test I can take? Now, again, I'm not saying that you should do the exercises. I'm not saying that you should do the breath test. I'm just telling you what the officer is going to be doing. It's your choice. If I personally was stopped and asked to exit the vehicle and told that I had signs of impairment, I wouldn't do the exercises. I wouldn't do the breath test. You know why? Because, look, I'm a little bit overweight. My athletic ability isn't what it was when I was 20 years old at University of Alabama, right? I'm not running track anymore. I'm not playing college football. I'm not boxing, you know, in the Olympic trials anymore. I'm not doing any of those things. Like I'm out of shape. I'm getting older. I'm not going to do them as well. So I'm not going to do those exercises and I'm not going to give them, a, well, I may give a breath if I absolutely had nothing to drink, but if I had one drink, I wouldn't. Why? Because it's their burden to prove. It's the state's burden and that police officer to prove beyond to the exclusion of a reasonable doubt that I'm guilty of DUI. And guess what? They're going to have a hard time, right? However, the officer clicks you up, right? He's going to click you up behind. Okay. So now what is he going to do? He's going to put you in the back of the police car. One trick that officers often do, people don't realize it because people are mad. They're angry. Oh, this is bull, right? Maybe you are drinking. Maybe you are upset. Maybe you are impaired. But people, listen, kill with kindness. Yes, sir. Right? He's going to put you in the back of the seat. Car cameras are reversible. They hit a little button. Next thing you know, that camera that was watching you outside the vehicle is now watching you inside the vehicle. It also has audio. So you're like, oh my God, why the fuck did I, oh, did I curse? Why the hell did I drink? Oh, like people say this stuff. Don't say this stuff because you're in the back of a police car. No, it is recorded, folks. It is recorded. And the DUI case isn't over. The DUI case, you're still in it just because you've been stopped, just because you've done the exercises. Now you've been arrested. Now they're making further observations. What are they looking for? Are you argumentative? Are you changing your mood? Are you laughing, like joking with the officer and seeming jovial and then crying the next 15 seconds and then calling him a pig and you piece of crap like in the next 15 seconds? They're looking for changes in, in, in your personality and your demeanor because that is another sign of impairment. They're looking to see, are you that guy who's going to come behind and now put your handcuffs in front of you? Are you the guy that's going to kick or the gal that's going to kick the window out? It's all recorded, folks, right? I've had cases where, like, I'm good on the exercises, and then they get into the back of the car, they start cursing and yelling, or they start talking to themselves, or they start crying and then laughing and then pulling the handcuffs up. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's an observation. Remember, there's six people in a jury box that are going to be deciding your fate if you end up if I can't win on a technical argument and we go in front of a jury, you got six people from the neighborhood. They're going to be like, look, this guy's all, all the exercises. Because they have to look at all of it. They have to look at all the exercises. How did he do? What did the officer say? How credible was the officer? 
How did, did, did was there something that contradicted the evidence? If you get in the car, right, and that's video, and you get in the car and you have no problems in the car and you're not making any unusual actions, it allows me as your defense attorney to go, after you arrested him, you put him in the car? Yes. You drove to the police station? Yes. The police station is approximately 20 minutes away? Yes. During the ride, you had an opportunity to observe the defendant? Yes. He didn't cry? No. He didn't piss his pants? No. He didn't change? He didn't cry? No. He didn't yell and scream at you and call you names? No. Right? These are things that help you folks. Don't get in the back of the police car and think like, oh, I'm not a... Remember I said in the very beginning, you can never win with a police officer. If he thinks that you're drunk, okay, you're drunk for that night. You're going to get arrested. You're going to you have to sit in custody for eight hours. You're going to see, you're either going to bond out or you're going to see a magistrate in the morning. That's it. Then you're out. Like, don't fight the battle in the street. You got it? Don't fight the battle in the street because he's going to be making observations all the way to the police station and then at the police station. So now you get to the police station. Guess what, folks? There's cameras at police stations. So even if there's not a camera on the officer or there's not a camera um, in the vehicle, guess what? I can order the cameras from the jail and you're walking fine, right? Because the officer's going to say, oh, he walked funny, right? He had an abnormal gait when he got out of the vehicle. When I asked him to do the exercises, he, he wasn't walking straight. He was off balance. Well, guess what? Like 30 minutes later, you're in a, you're at the jail and you're walking fine. How does that look? You think that's going to impeach his credibility? You think people are going to start to go, maybe, maybe, I don't know, this officer just writes all his reports the same way. That's another thing that we do as, as DUI attorneys. I always pull the last five reports, at least the last five reports of an officer when I'm fighting a DUI case. Why? You know why? Because a lot of cops, you know what they do? They copy and paste and write the same thing. The, the defendant had an odor of alcoholic beverage that I could smell from outside the vehicle. His face was flushed, his eyes were blood, her eyes were bloodshot. Uh, they had an abnormal gait, they fumbled. They tend to write the same stuff. I don't know, how do you think a jury would feel when you show them four other reports? Like, hey officer, you've done a lot of reports, you're gonna brag about his experience. And I go, you wrote this in this report, you wrote this in this report. You, they, all, they all exacted like, they all acted like my, my client here, Peter? There's issues, folks. Don't give them evidence that you don't have to. Be kind, courteous, respectful to the best of your ability. Keep your mouth shut to the best of your ability, okay? You're in the police car, you get to the jail. Now you're gonna go into the BAT facility, right? We call the breath alcohol testing. What does is, what is Florida use? Florida uses the Intoxilizer 8000 currently, right? They're gonna have you, if you're in Palm Beach, you're gonna walk into a room, there's a line, there's a little chair in the corner, the breath machine's over to the left. If you're in Broward, they're going to observe the room. You stand in the dead center of the room. There's a, a line and there's a mic right above you. You see, I do a lot of DUIs. Um, I can describe every room for like five counties. Um, and then the officer is going to read what's called implied consent. He's going to say, um, sir, ma'am, would you like to uh, give a breath test at this time? Right? A lot of people have heard, you know, dinner parties, just say no. If you're going to say no, say no to everything, right? Why not the exercises too? But if you say no, there's a, a legal document that that officer needs to read you. And it generally goes like this. If you fail to give an exercise, if you, sorry, blah, 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 I should memorize this. Or I should read it from the thing because I don't have it memorized. But basically the gist is if you fail or you refuse to give a breath, your license will be suspended for 12 months. If, you, if this is a second or subsequent refusal, meaning if you had another DUI in the past, whether you won it, lost it, did a diversion or whatever, and you refuse, your license is going to be suspended for 18 months. Okay. Is that accurate? The word should be may. It's not shall, may be suspended. Can you go to a former review hearing? This is a quick aside. Can you go to a former review hearing? You can. What are the chances of winning a former review hearing? Overall average, probably less than 3%. All they have to do is prove that you were driving the vehicle, that the officer thought you were impaired, and either you refused or you gave a breath over 0 0.08. Guess what, folks? It's pretty easy. He was driving. I, as an officer trained, thought he was impaired, too, right? And or he refused or he gave a breath over 0.08. That's it. You lose. Okay. So most people do a waiver. That, that's a whole nother video.
All right, so he asked you to, um, to blow into the, ta- into, the, into the machine. You either say yes or no. If you refuse, your license most likely is going to be suspended for 12 months for refusal. If you give a breath, this is very important. If you give a breath and it is over 0.08, right, your license is automatically suspended for six months on a first DUI, right? If you blow under, you get your license back that eight hours later when you when you exit the jail, right? So look, if you had one drink, now if you had a drink like this and it was like how I make a, a gin 7-Up and lime juice when I do drink once or twice in a year, right, a big gulp cup, well, that one cup probably would get me drunk even though I'm 250 pounds. It's one cup, but... It's not an ounce and a quarter. If I had been out to dinner and I drank one beer, I would never admit it, but if I did drink one beer, one beer is not going to give you a 0.08 reading, which is the legal limit, okay? So that's something you consider in your mind. I'm just telling you, you don't have to give the test, but if you don't give the test, you're gonna have a license suspended for either a year or 18 months, okay? It even gets more difficult if you've had more than uh, two DUIs. It also, if it's a second DUI and you refuse, just so you know, you can't get a hardship license. You're only entitled to a hardship license, right? Business purposes only. Giving you a lot of facts, but you can watch my video 20 times and, and learn it all. Um, if you um, have a second DUI, you're arrested in 2015 for a DUI and you win. You win the DUI and the case is dismissed. Guess what? You still had a refusal on a previous DUI for DMV purposes. The second DUI, right, even though you won the first DUI, you can't get a hardship license. So you either go to a formal review hearing and fight it, which I already told you you have a 3% chance of winning, um, or you have no license for 18 months. That's the facts. Okay, so he reads you implied consent. Hey, if you don't, all he's telling you is he has the legal duty to tell you, look, you can blow or not blow, it's your choice. He's not going to say it that way. He's going to give, he's going to read right from the, right from the chart. He's going to say, sir, this is your first DUI and you refuse. Your license will be suspended for a year. If it's a second or subsequent refusal, your license will be suspended for 18 months. That's all you need to know. That, that's the gist of it. Um, and you're either going to give a breath or you don't. If you don't, you got a license suspension, um, but you are eligible for a hardship on the first DUI. On a second, you're not. Um, and then you blow into the machine. Okay. So how does that go? They give you a little, they bring you, walk you over to the machine. In Broward, it's in another room. In Palm Beach, it's in the same room, and you can actually see it on the video. Well, they actually moved the, the machine over, but the last time, the last video I had, they, they had it. So they give you a little tube. They change out the tube so everyone doesn't use the same tube, and they ask you to blow. And you're going to hear, they're just going to go, you're going to keep saying to you, blow, blow, blow. And you go, And you're going to hear a beep from the machine, meaning that it's got enough breath. If you don't blow into it and you try to fake it and you don't blow, the machine's going to register something called volume not met. And if the volume's not met, right, you know how hard difficult it is like to get medical records and introduce them. And then the, the, half the time the courts are going to say that it goes to the weight of the evidence. And you can, you can argue that to a jury, Mr. Foley, but I'm still going to admit that the refusal, meaning that the officer is going to write down, if you blow in and you don't meet the volume, right? A certain amount of breath, you have to, right? You got to blow into it pretty hard, right? If you can't, oh, you, you have lung problems, you have the coronavirus, right? You know, you have something that like you couldn't blow in, you have weakened or diminished lung capacity, maybe you have lung cancer, right? You know, different things, ammonia, right? You might not be able to blow, right? In, into the machine to volume that. Well, the officer is going to write refusal, meaning that you didn't do it. And then the state attorney is going to argue, listen, it's not that difficult. You go and you blow into it. You don't have to blow with like 400 pounds of pressure or anything. And he didn't do it. Why? Look, he's a big, strong guy. She's a healthy woman. There's no reason. They just didn't do it. And then, you know, I'm going to try to argue that you did or you didn't, right? So, um, or or that that you blew, but there was a problem with the machine. How do you attack a... Intoxilizer 8000. Well, uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement has all the information online. Every every single Intoxilizer 8000 is tested. It has a self-test that it does. 
and it tells you, and I know this is difficult, you go, well, self-test. Well, that's like, you know, a doctor saying, oh, you know, or your hair, your hairdresser's lady saying, oh, it looks, your hair looks beautiful right after they cut it, but they cut half your hair off and you look terrible. It, it, When you blow into the machine, there's a record. They're going to test the machine before. They're going to test, and, and then it's going to show you right when this machine turns on, it does a self-test, and it's going to check. It actually checks to determine the blood alcohol level. So they actually put a drop of a predetermined solution into the machine to make sure that it's registering correctly. Then it has things like you know seal loose or volume not met, and there's error codes that come in. So what, a, what, a, what does a DUI defense attorney do? Well, he pulls the results of your test, the test before you, the test after you, five tests before you, five tests after you, a month before you, a week after you, a month after you. I literally, on my cases, I go back a year. I want to see if there's any problems with that machine. Did that machine, what was it... Um, was it certified? Was it within the time parameters, right? Every machine is test tested. Again, they're tested monthly, weekly, yearly, but there's certifications. I want to make sure that there's a proper certification. We've had cases where the certification expired and they didn't realize it. Does it happen a lot? No. Did it happen 10 years ago? Yes. But it doesn't happen as much, but I still have a duty to look and that's what I'm looking for. So when you have a blood alcohol reading that is above 0 0.08, if there are problems with the machine, it's something I can argue to a jury. Does it come in? Probably. Can I file a motion to suppress the evidence? Yes. Will the judge grant it? Yes. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But I always assume worst case scenario. I'm not a Hail Mary, let's win the football game on a Hail Mary kind of guy. I want to go systematically, methodically through each and every possibility and hold all of these officers, right, to their training, because guess what? People cut corners, we all know that. Like, you watch the guy that cut your grass, you pay him 100 bucks so, you know, a week, 200 bucks to cut your grass. If you go out there on, on Saturday and he cuts your grass on Thursday, and you're like, oh my goodness, was he drunk? Like, there's lines of grass, like he didn't weed whack properly. That's just an example. Like, there's no experts anymore. There's no perfection. People don't adhere to perfection. The general population, aren't perfectionists. They're not obsessive compulsive of, of getting it right. That's where <laughs> you have an advantage. If they cut a corner, if they don't follow a rule, if they don't follow a procedure, right? If they don't give you due process, 14th Amendment, those are issues that we win on. Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, 14th Amendment are all issues that I deal with on DUI, right? So keep in mind, just because you blew a... 0.14, right? Almost double the limit. That doesn't mean that there wasn't a problem. That doesn't mean that there wasn't a conflict in the evidence that I can't show your video that shows how you did all the exercises. Great, right? In my opinion, or I would tell you, obviously, I'm not going to put a, I'm not going to tell you, hey, you, you should consider a jury trial if you're falling down, vomiting, throwing up, walking like that. Oh, so come on, let's go. come on. I got some scotch in my car. Like, you want to drink some scotch, right, man? Right? Like, look, if you're like that, we're going to look for technical arguments, the things the officer did wrong, and do motions to suppress and motions to dismiss and motions to quash arrest. But if some of those are successful, but not totally successful, meaning all the evidence isn't thrown out, you may have an option where it's go to trial and make your argument or take a plea. Well, sometimes, sometimes you got to just go to trial, folks. Sometimes your case is good enough to go to trial. Obviously, it's your choice. Any responsible DUI defense attorney will show you what's good for you, what's bad for you, and then allow you to make the, um, the choice. It, it's your choice, ultimately, whether you go to trial or take a plea. It's my choice on what motions to file, what arguments to make, and I'm going to make them all. I'm going to make every argument that I think has a 1% chance or more to win, right? Because that's a good faith possibility of victory, and I'm going to file them. I filed, I had a case in Broward years ago, um, Judge Ross. Nice judge, good judge, former prosecutor, knows her stuff. I uh, fi filed six motions to suppress on a 3.06 breath alcohol level. Out of the six motions, 
I lost five of them. On the sixth motion, she goes, State, I'm gonna have to grant this one. And it was a simple, simple issue of actual physical control of where were the keys. The officers never really placed the keys. Um, and we won on a 306, the case was dismissed. So just because you have a high breath doesn't mean that your case is impossible. Might be difficult, probably extremely difficult, but you wanna hire an attorney that knows his stuff, right? And it doesn't have to be me. There, there's a lot of talented attorneys out there. I'm not, I'm not the only guy who's good at DUI. Um, you choose the attorney that's best for you, but no folks, don't like you get out of jail, you're miserable, you're sad, you're upset, my job, my family, my my mug shots online. It's not over. The arrest and his investigation are over. Guess what? Officers, you know how rare it is for them to go back and go to a scene and take a picture or to do a real quality inventory of the car. They make mistakes. There's always something that you can argue in a DUI case, almost because it's so complicated. The books are like this thick, right? There's always something that can be argued and something can be won. It's whether it's dispositive. What is dispositive? Whether it's a sufficient enough error by the police officer or the breath tech operator to get the evidence to be thrown away. If it's just a mistake, like they misspell your name or they put the wrong street address, that doesn't get your case thrown out, folks. It has to be dispositive. It has to be a serious enough error that the, the, the evidence gets thrown out. And if the evidence gets thrown out, then the case gets thrown out. You know what happens most of the time? If I, as a defense attorney, file a motion to suppress, before I even argue it, I talk to the prosecutor. They know. They know. Now, they don't always know because I have some prosecutors that go, well, I don't know what you're talking about. And then, you know, then we go to court and we find out who's right and who's wrong, right? But a lot, of, a lot of them take the time to read it, right? You get established in your job. People know, like, I don't file motions if I don't think I can legitimately win, right? So I file a motion, they look at it and they go, okay, I think you have an argument here. You possibly, but I can argue this. And, and then we kind of duke it out on the phone or in person and, you know, not physically duke it out. You know, we, we go back and forth, like we debate the issue. And a lot of times the prosecutor go, okay, what do you want? And I'll say, I want a reckless with a withhold of adjudication and court cost. I don't want DUI school. I don't want this. I don't want that. I, I don't want community service hours. And then they'll say, well, I'll give you the reckless, but I want an adjudication. And we go back and forth. But this is, DUI is complicated, folks. You start with the, the, the vehicle in motion, then, then the personal observations, then the field sobriety exercises, then the ride home, right? Then the bath facility, then implied consent, right? Because if they read it incorrectly, they don't read the car. Like, I don't have it memorized, and I've done hundreds, if not a thousand DUIs. Well, if they don't read it from the car and they make a mistake, guess what? Maybe that implied consent is, is thrown out. And it's not a refusal anymore, right? The jury just doesn't hear that part. You don't have a breath and you don't have a refusal, prosecutors are more willing to work out the case, to reduce the charges, maybe even dismiss the charges. Never give up. There's a lot. Find yourself a quality defense attorney. If you're in Florida, reach out to me. I do them all over the state. Um, I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. I hope that this helps you. I gave you so much information in these, these few videos that I made on DUI. Um, you Now you know. So... Give me a call if you need me. I hope you don't. Watch the video again and again and, and learn. And if you're drinking, don't drive, folks. Be safe. Be safe for yourself. Be safe for others. Um, if you think that you've been falsely arrested, if you think that you were not impaired or you were impaired, but you want to make them prove each and every element, you call me or you call another qualified DUI attorney. Okay. I'm attorney Roger P. Foley. Thank you for listening. Bye now.